another session of Tao overflows. What happens when you enter into love? What happens when you enter into the domain, the realm of love? Not love, the realm of love. It is all encompassing. What happens when you enter the realm of love? The all-encompassing, in deep, intimate world of love. The person disappears, the form disappears. The form disappears, not only the person disappears. His name, his features, his face disappears. All these are part of the form. Do you remember or do you know the name of the your lover or your beloved when you are in deep intimate love? The form disappears and then lover becomes just a door for you to enter or the beloved becomes the door to enter into the vastness of the existence. Your curiosity can be scientific one, then if it is scientific curiosity, then you have to enter through logic. Then you must not think of the formless. Then be aware of the formless. Remain content with the form. Only then logic can remain effective. Science is always concerned with form, the matter. If anything is formless, any, if anything formless is proposed or expressed to a scientific mind, he will divide it, he will cut into a form. Unless it takes a form, the analysis, the logic will not work. First, the scientific approach, the scientist gives it as a form, a definite form. Only then does the inquiry begin. But the religious inquiry begins when the form gives way to the formless. Form becomes formless. Your existence becomes non-existence. In love, if there is a form, then there is no end to it. Dissolve the form first. If when you are in love or in your so-called love making, you continue to think of your form. Form is an expression of identity. Identity. Your ego sense. This has to come to an end. Dissolve the form. When things become formless, your identity becomes formless. Your name becomes formless. Your status becomes formless. Your educational qualification becomes formless, dizzy, without any boundaries. Because when you are within the room and space encompassed within the boundaries, the outside breeze is not affecting you. The moment boundaries are removed, the breeze is blowing from all sides, rain drops may be falling. So you feel dizzy without boundaries. Everything is entering into another. Now if the rain is falling, the rain will not enter. If there is a strong wind, it will not enter. But when you are in the open space, the rain, everything will enter together. Everything entering another, the rain merging with the wind that is blowing, the thunder, lightning, the 
everything is entering into one another. The whole universe has become oneness. The thunder, the lightning, the strong winds, the rainfall, all has become one. And only in that state you can experience this wonderful universe. Then Devi asks, what constitutes this seed? She goes on. She does not stop at asking the personal question, why? What is thy reality? And then from there, the moment Shiva's form disappears, she immediately moves to this wonderful universe because Shiva has become the boundaries are no more. The form has become formless and the formless form is representative of the cosmos. So she says, what is this wonderful universe? And from the universe, she goes on to ask, which is natural, what constitutes this seed? This formless, wonderful universe, from where does it evolve? From where does it come? From where does it originate? Or does it not originate? So does it originate from seed? A flower origin blossoms from the seed. What is the seed? Who centers this universal wheel? Who centers this universal wheel? Ask Devi. The wheel goes on moving and moving. The great change takes place, which is constantly happening. A flux is there. But who centers this wheel? Where is the axis? You have a wheel in your car. It has an axle. But where is the axle for the cosmic wheel? The centers, the upcoming center. She does not stop for any answer. She goes on asking, as if she is not asking anyone, instead she is talking to herself. This is the state of a beloved. She does not stop at any answer. What is this life beyond form, pervading forms? Lao Tzu says, Tao that can be expressed is not Tao. It cannot be expressed. But when it manifests, it manifests thousand and one things. What is life beyond form? You know life as a part of form, but there is formless beyond the form. What is this life beyond form? And not only form, but form pervading forms because you keep on changing the forms. How may we enter it fully above is space, above is space, time, name and descriptions. These are the known boundaries, the space within the room, the time, the names and descriptions. How can I enter the outer space? I am in this room. How can I enter this? You know there is a door. You come out of the door. You go on crossing the doors upon doors, one after the other, until you reach the outer space. So the beloved becomes a door for you to enter into the vastness of the op or the open space, the universe. That is why love is a great transcending force. It transforms you. If you have really entered into intimate love with someone, with your spouse, then you experience freedom. You experience transcendence. You experience something that you have never experienced before. And when that happens, 
you know the reason why your life is changing. How may we enter it fully above space, time? Then she says, let my doubts be cleared. The emphasis is not on the questions but on doubts. These are not questions, these are doubts. There is a difference between question and a doubt. Question both belong to different realm. Let all my doubts be cleared. Question means you question means that it is coming out of the mind and doubt means that you are you know about it but you do not have a clear idea about it you somehow think this is it but you are not sure about it you know you have a certain idea this is very significant if you are asking an intellectual question you are asking for a definite answer so your problem so that your problem can be solved but devi is asking she know about it but she is not certain if it is so so there are doubts in her mind she says let my doubts be cleared she is not really asking the answers for question this is the state of a disciple. When disciple becomes so in intimate relation with the master, just as what happens between lover and beloved, then the process of transformation begins. She is asking for transformation of her mind because a doubting mind will remain always a doubting mind because a doubting mind whatsoever answers are given, the doubts will remain there. No matter how many answers, how many different way I keep on answering your questions, but the doubt will remain always there, lurking behind those questions. Answers are irrelevant. If I give you one answer and your mind continues to doubt or your mind is doubting, you will doubt it. I will give you another answer, you will doubt it again. As many answers I'll give you, you go on doubting about it. So unless your doubting mind is cleared, the process of questions will not stop. So the questions are irrelevant, useless. You may ask me so many questions and for that very reason Buddha said, Never ask metaphor, metaphysical questions. If you are asking questions relating to you, I will answer. This is very important in the process of transformation of human consciousness. Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, the communion that is happening with Shiva and Devi is an expression what's supposed to happen between master and disciple. Disciple has doubting mind, questions keep on arising, mushrooming out of that mind. She wants all, he wants like a disciple, like an in, in who is an intimate relation. She keeps on asking the question, let my doubts be cleared. Only this much for this afternoon. Take care.